Hi, in this problem we're asked to find the value of c guaranteed by the mean value theorem if it applies to this function on this interval. So the mean value theorem says uh, that your function should be continuous on the closed interval. This is a polynomial, so it's continuous everywhere. In particular, it's continuous on this interval. And it should be differentiable on the open interval. In this case, it would be parentheses negative 1, comma 1. And again, this is a polynomial, so it's differentiable everywhere, so there is no issue. It says if these conditions are satisfied, then there exists uh, some number c, such that the derivative of f at c is equal to f of b minus f of a over b minus a. In this problem, this is our a and this is our b. So again, if you have a function that's continuous on the closed interval, differentiable on the open interval, there is a number c in the interval such that the derivative is equal to this expression here. All kinds of ways to interpret this. You could say that uh, the instantaneous rate of change at c is equal to the average rate of change over the entire interval. You could say the slope of the tangent line is equal to the slope of the secant line connecting the two points uh, at the endpoints. So let's go ahead and find the value of c. It's all we have to do in this problem. So to find the value of c, we just have to work out both sides of this equation and solve. Let's start by working out uh, the derivative. So f prime of x. This is a pretty easy derivative. We just use the power rule here. So we bring down the 3, the so 3x squared. And then here, uh, the derivative of 2x is 2. All right, and now for the other part, f of b, so that's b is 1, so it's f of 1 minus f of negative 1, and that's being divided by 1 minus negative 1, so b minus a, so 1 minus negative 1. Okay, f of 1, we're just basically going to plug in 1 for this, so it'll be 1 plus 2, so 3 right, because it's one cube, which is one, plus two times one, so it'll be one plus one, one plus two, so three, minus, and then f of negative one, it'll be negative one cubed, so that's negative one, and then two times negative one, so minus two. And on the bottom, we have one plus one, so that's two. This is equal to three minus negative three over two, Okay, because it's negative 1 minus 2, so negative 3. So 3 plus 3 is going to be 6 over 2, which is just 3. All right, so the right-hand side is 3. And so now we just have to set it equal to this. So we have that this is equal to this. You don't have to use c. In fact, I'm not going to. I'm just going to say 3x squared plus 2 equals 3. You can call it c if you like. It doesn't really matter, I think. Minus 2, minus 2. So we get 3x squared equals 1. All right. And we have to solve this uh, for x. So we can do that by dividing by 3. Divide by 3. So we get x squared equals 1 over 3. And then to solve this for x, you simply take the square root of both sides. And you do get a plus or minus. You get x equals plus or minus the square root of one third. Whenever you take a square root like this on both sides and you have some type of variable raised to an even power, um, you want to put a plus or minus to make sure everything is good because you do get two possible answers. We should check though our interval is negative one one and we should always check to see that our answers are in our interval or rather it should be in the open interval. So negative one one. In any case, um, both of these numbers are, so those are our values of c. I just happened to call it x, but you can call it x, or you can call it c. It's up to you. Not too bad, pretty simple example of the mean value theorem. So in these problems, really, all you do is you work this out. Be careful, in this case, we got three. Take the derivative, and then you just set them equal, and you solve. And then at the very end, just always make sure that your answers are in your interval. I hope this video has been helpful. Good luck.